Uh, this is John Buck. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk about discrete time systems and difference equations. Uh, we've seen so far a lot of difference equations where the system tells us uh, or tells a relationship between the input and output. But what we'll see today is that difference equation can also be a recipe or an algorithm to compute the output for the input when I have a, a system that is causal, linear, and time invariant. We'll talk about uh, what the initial conditions I need to guarantee linear and time invariant systems are. Uh, we'll also talk about the difference between a recursive and a non-recursive difference equation and how I can tell the order of a difference equation. And then we'll do two simple examples uh, showing uh, how we apply this, both this algorithm, sort of turning the crank to iterate through time, and, and those, how to recognize recursive and non-recursive systems. So again, our, our topic for today is difference equations. Should be if the pen will let me write. Oh, I'm a little confused about that. Now we'll write in blue then. Difference equations. Okay, so for a difference equation, in its most general form, what we say is, is that it's a relationship between uh, weighted delayed versions of the output and input, sums of both of those things. So a sum of weighted and delayed versions of the output is equal to a weighted sum of delayed versions of the input. So if I turn those words into an equation, what it says is I have a sum, let's say as k goes from 0 to n of y of n minus k, each of them weighted by some a sub k. And that's going to be equal to, on the right-hand side, I've got weighted, so uh, b sub l, use a little cursive l there, getting fancy today, times x of n minus l, as l goes from 0 to capital M. So I have up to n and m of these. And we say, in general, just like we have an order for a differential equation uh, in, in differential equations or continuous time systems, we would say that the order of this system is equal to the maximum of the upper limits on the sums. So whichever is larger <clears throat> that will be the upper limit on the sum. And we'll see that has an important implication uh, when we're looking at uh, block diagrams to implement these in, in, in a video coming up shortly. Uh, another important term is we say that our difference equation is non-recursive if the weights for the, the left-hand side, if a sub k equals 0 for all the terms except the first one, which is sort of a fancy way of saying the output is only defined in terms of the input. You say, well, what else would it be? Well, let's talk about the recursive version. So for a recursive signal, or recursive system rather, y of n includes weighted and some or weighted versions of the out the earlier outputs. So why we call it recursive is is y of n may be defined in terms of y of n minus 1, y of n minus 2, and so on. Okay, so if the equation is just y of n in terms of weighted and some values of x, we call it a non-recursive difference equation. And that's important. These lead, we'll see in a little while, to what we call finite length impulse responses. Right, or sometimes these are abbreviated FIR systems. The recursive ones lead to infinite impulse responses. Or I should say infinite length impulse responses. And these are some often abbreviated IIR systems. And these are important terms. We'll keep coming back to them, but I wanted to get them on the, the board as it were early in the game here so that that people are familiar with these and see them more as we go through. The other important idea about, about uh, difference equations 
is, is so far we've seen a lot of equations written in terms of, of difference equations between inputs and outputs. But let, let's talk about what happens when I have a causal system. So if, if for causal LTI systems, it's a special case. We can, we can use the difference equation as an algorithm. So the difference equation is not just a relationship, an equation that's satisfied by the input and output, but I can actually use it as an algorithm to find y of n from x of n. And in fact, if, if those of you that are used to using MATLAB, in MATLAB, this is what the filter command does. For the MATLAB filter command, you give it the coefficients of the difference equation and the input sequence x of n is a vector, and it just cranks through and finds the output y of n for that input. Uh, but the important thing to have it be causal and LTI is that the initial conditions must be uh, um, initial conditions uh, must be what we call initial rest. Informally, what that means is that as long as the input is zero, the output will be zero. So I won't have anything non-zero at the output until I hit my first sort of kick at the input, my first non-zero value. If I sort of write that formally, we can say if x of n equals zero for n less than some time value n naught, then y of n is also, also equals zero for that time. Okay, so as long as the input stays flat or zero, the output will be zero. If this is satisfied for these initial, this is what we call the initial rest input conditions. If this is true, then my difference equation will be, uh, I'll have a causal LTI system. I guess, uh, important assumption there, as long as the difference equation is itself linear, if I have a, a, a linear system. Okay, so those are some basic definitions. I, I think this video has gone long enough, so I'm actually going to pause here and break, and I'll do a separate video for some examples, uh, two examples applying these to, to new uh, or, or to, to two difference equations.